Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. It's been a little while since my last update here, but there has been no shortage of news. So we're going to go ahead and dive into everything here in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with the PS4. So first of all, of course, we got the release of Gold 10 version 2.4 B18 from Sistro. Now this version, I've already done a full video that breaks down all of the new features in detail. However, just to quickly go over it here, if you haven't seen that video, we got support for 10.50, 10.70 and 10.71 in this new version. We also got a new cheat downloader feature added thanks to CTN, which is a new option in the cheat settings, which can allow you to download the latest cheats and update the latest cheats. And you can also filter for only downloading cheats for games that you have already installed. So that is a new feature that has been added in this version. Plus, we also got stability improvements along with the identification of a few problematic homebrew apps that are causing issues with Gold Hen, which can cause it to malfunction when entering and exiting rest mode or when shutting down the system. And those applications are the Apollo Save Tool, Items Flow and Orbis Toolbox. So those are the updates there with the latest version of Gold Hen. We also got the release of a new version of the Apollo Save Tool. Now, this version is specifically for adding PS2 support. So any PS2 games that you run on the PS4, you'll be able to manage the save files now in the Apollo save tool. So there's a bunch of new options here that have been added here for managing PlayStation 2 virtual memory card images. So you can, of course, import saves into the virtual memory card from the hard drive or from the USB. And then if you go to the save management option, you can also do things like, of course, export the save files from the virtual memory cards. And you can actually export the virtual memory cards to a VM2 format or VMC format as well. So a bunch of options there. We also have online database added PS2 saves listing. So you'll now be able to download PlayStation 2 save files from the online database, not just PS4 saves. We also have a save sorting option by type. So you can filter for PS4 saves, PS2 saves and VMC. And then, of course, we also have support for additional firmwares. So a lot of features there added in this new version of Apollo Save Tool. Of course, you can download it using the Homebrew Store on your PS4. Just go onto the Homebrew Store and you can actually just go to the Apollo Save Tool and then uh, select the option to update to the latest version. And that'll get you updated. Uh, the Apollo Save Tool might have its own built-in updater. I can't actually remember, but generally I always find it's more reliable to just update using the homebrew store personally because sometimes these built-in updaters to these homebrew apps don't always work properly so yeah anyway there we go so we've got a new version of the apollo save tool now another thing for ps4 and this also affects ps5 is that there have been some developments in relation to the lua script uh, that we covered in a previous news update which is the ability to use lua script or execute lua script through a save file uh, which has been discovered for games that use the artemis engine which tend to be a lot of Japanese weeb games, unfortunately, but that's just how it is. So these games actually use Lua script for the save files and you can enter custom Lua script and run it. But that isn't an exploit. It's just something that could potentially turn into an exploit. That's where we left off from the last time that we covered this. However, this time it looks like there's been several developments uh, to actually make this into a usable exploit. And we're getting very close to that being an actual reality. We now actually have uh, the developer, Jazine, who's working with Nullpointer and Flats and various other people in the R&D Discord who are collaborating here to try and turn this into a usable userland exploit, which can then be used to trigger kernel exploits in the PS5 and the PS4. So if a new kernel exploit comes out for the PS4 on, say, 11.50, 11.52, 11.02, 12.0, etc., perhaps we could use this save file exploit to trigger that kernel exploit and get a jailbreak that way. So it's just another user land exploit that will be handy to have in our back pocket for when a potential new kernel exploit comes out. So that's something that we can definitely look forward to. And also, of course, for the PS5, we could also use this to potentially trigger the UMTX kernel exploit that we're currently using with uh, WebKit. We're currently using the WebKit exploit as our entry point, our user land exploit to trigger that up to 5.50 and then for higher firmwares we have the blu-ray drive exploit we can use this would be a third potential method of triggering that same uh, kernel exploit using a save file uh, there's still more developments to come i wouldn't necessarily say it's 100 percent concrete yet and the project on github has not yet been updated so i don't want to jump the gun here but there's definitely been a lot of progress happening which has taken this from just being able to execute Lua script through a save file to actually triggering some vulnerabilities that could certainly lead to this becoming a full user land exploit. So good progress happening there as well. Now let's go ahead and move on to the PlayStation 5 because we do have several developments happening there. So of course we got the release of Bipervisor by Spectre 
and that has now been fully integrated into uh, IdleSauce's exploit host. So IdleSauce has now created a proper host for running the exploit. Previously, these were just tests where it would run the elf loader, but now we actually have the payloads integrated into the web host. So now when you execute the UMTX exploit using IdleSauce's version, you will actually get a bunch of payloads that you can select from. So there's FTP, there's the web server, uh, you've got a bunch of other things like Klog server, shell server. Uh, you can also do things like display your SDK version and, and all of that kind of stuff. And then of course we have for 1.x and 2.x, we have Bypervisor Hen that you can run, which will actually run the hypervisor exploit. So that is what we have access to now. Now, one of the issues that I covered in my own tutorial on how to set up the Bypervisor exploit was that there is an issue with slowdown with the current version. So the current version runs very slow, especially when you're trying to launch games, you'll have it take a lot longer to actually load the game up. And then the loading times are much longer than they should be. It actually seems slower than K stuff, which is the other workaround we use to get around the hypervisor on higher firmwares where we don't have a proper hypervisor exploit, whereas it should be a lot faster because it's just using kernel patches. So Spectre actually replied to this directly. He said the issue with stuff being slow might just be because I left too much logging code in the hooks. I'll probably release a better version soon that should hopefully fix that. So that would be good. We might see a kind of improved version of Bypervisor Hen that will run a lot faster. So it looks like it's not a big issue. It seems that Spectre can probably fix this quite quickly by just removing the logging code in the hooks and then releasing a new version that will run a lot faster. So that is what we're hoping for, but Lightning Mods might actually beat him to it because Lightning Mods has recently received a 2.30 test kit from Zeko and is now working on his own version of ETA Hen using the Bypervisor exploit. So we can see here from this post on X, it took some additional kernel patches in Hen, but the ETA Hen toolbox is alive on 2.30, thanks to EchoStretch for porting these additional patches to other 2.xx firmwares. So yeah, it looks like we could be seeing a version of ETA Hen that uses Bypervisor instead of K-Stuff, so direct kernel patches, which means a lot more stable if you remember one of the big issues we've had with ETA Hen recently is the fact that it's adding all of these additional features that all run in the background it tends to cause more slowdown as well as instability issues. But that shouldn't really be a problem once we actually have a version that uses Bypervisor where it's using direct kernel patches instead, instead of having this uh, case stuff version where we have like this background process that has to handle all of these different things at once and slows down the system. We won't have that issue on 1.x and 2.x firmwares once we get this version of ETA Hen coming out. Also, Lightning Mod's version of ETA Hen will automatically put the system into rest mode to load the Bypervisor exploit. You don't have to do it manually. And to go along with this release, Lightning Mods is also working on a version of Items Flow, which will also work on these older firmwares using the Bypervisor exploit. So last but not least, we've also had some updates from Hammer83 on the Blu-ray drive implementation of the PS5 UMTX exploit. So a few updates here. One of them is that Bypervisor has actually been added in here. So if you are on 1.x to 2.x firmwares, you can actually try and load the Bypervisor exploit from a Blu-ray disc instead. Now, again, it's not recommended really because the WebKit is just a better way of loading it generally and it's more stable. So I wouldn't really recommend, uh, you know, trying to load Bypervisor from a Blu-ray disc right now. Um, it's just more of a proof of concept to show that it can be done. So you just send one of the UMTX snapshots, you wait for that to execute. And once that's fully executed, you then send the Bypervisor snapshot there. And that will actually run the Bypervisor exploit on the PS5. Now, of course, you have to enter rest mode and then recover from rest mode and then load it again a second time. So that's why it doesn't really make sense to use the Blu-ray drive method because it takes much longer. It's much better just to use the WebKit. But again, it's a proof of concept to show that the Blu-ray drive method can be used also to load the Bypervisor exploit on 1.x and 2.x firmwares. Now, speaking of the Bypervisor exploit, Spectre has also mentioned the idea of switching the primary method used for Bypervisor over to the jump table version. So he ran a poll here on X where he says, do people care enough not wanting to use rest mode and resume to switch the primary exploit for Bypervisor to the jump tables one? It's higher maintenance and possibly slightly less stable, but would be slightly more convenient to run, I guess. And the majority of people did vote yes for this. I did vote, I personally voted no because I think stability is better uh, personally, and especially less maintenance for developers would also uh, be better in my opinion. 
but the majority of people don't like the fact that you have to put the system into rest mode and recover. It takes quite a while. Uh, they would rather switch it over to the jump tables one. So we'll see if Spectre decides to actually do that or not, uh, which would eliminate the need to use rest mode, but it would make, make things less stable, which I think is probably a bad trade-off. Depends how unstable it makes it, I suppose, because if it's uh, very unstable and you know, you're know you crashing multiple times trying to run it, then surely just entering rest mode and recovering rest mode takes less time than going through multiple crashes. That's how I feel about it. But again, it depends. If it's pretty stable, then that might not really be an issue. So yeah, anyway, we'll see if he decides to switch it over to the other version. I mean, we could just have two versions to kind of test to see which one we like the best, I guess, uh, because we have two hypervisor exploits that Spectre released with Bypervisor. There was the QA flags version, which is the version that's primarily used right now where you have to enter rest mode and recover in order for it to work. And then there's the jump tables exploit, which is again, less stable and higher maintenance, but does not require you to enter and exit rest mode uh, when actually running the exploit. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.